Well, I kind of lied to you. I didn't. Uh, I didn't show you torquing the. Their, uh, yeah, I showed you the, the first couple, but I didn't show you the the 50, uh, 60 extra degrees that was actually uh, required to keep on going with those rod bolts. But um, I did want to tell you that the first three pistons, you saw the first two, the first three went good, the fourth one started giving me problems, and it was this thing. It is, it took nothing. It is bent, and I fought and fought and fought. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I fought this thing trying to get those rings out. I kept having to put it back, bring it back out and bend it and retwist it and stuff. I had to pull at least three or four of the pistons clear back out again and start over from scratch. And um, Buy good tools. This is the only one they had, and I wanted to get this done. I, I know what will happen. The second I start cleaning this garage, I want to find that, that, uh, that, that hex key that I needed to use my good one. But um, there's all kinds of different ones of these out there. Do not use this piece of crap. If you're doing a, a single engine, like a, uh, you know, uh, whatever, your lawnmower engine, I guess that's okay. Don't use that piece of crap on an engine. I was not real pleased the way this came out, but uh, I mean, it went. They went in. It didn't break any rings or nothing. It was just the idea of having to. I, I messed with the tool more than I was able to work on the engine. Does that make any sense? Um, we've talked about this before. Your time is worth something to you. And if you're finding a tool or stuff that you keep misplacing, like I seem to have trouble doing as I'm getting older, this is really, you know, ah, doesn't matter. Anyway, everything is torqued. The crank, of course, you've seen, well, maybe you didn't see me do this, maybe you did, I don't remember. I did the rods, another 60 degrees after 15 pounds. Um, and everything spins over nice, just like it's supposed to. Nothing is binding up, nothing is hitting anything. Uh, I re oiled the cylinders a little bit. Um, now something that um, I was surprised about, I've always, and I may have said this on another video, man, I'm losing it here. I always left my oil set 24 hours in the oil that I was going to use. And I was told three different places, you do not do that with these roller lifters. You do not submerge them, you do not cover them with oil. I'm probably still going to put a little bit on the roller end of it at least, you know what I mean, at the very bottom and uh, before I put it in, but they are actually saying not not to do that. So I was kind of surprised uh, that so much, I'm not gonna say so much has changed since I've, I've never really dealt with many roller motors. I mean, I did with that Ford years and years ago, but um, it doesn't matter. <sighs> barking neighbor's dogs. They even took one to the pound yesterday and they still got one over barking all the time. Um, anyway, this is going together pretty pretty decent. I wanted to stop and tell you about that tool. That is not the tool to use. So uh, I did not have any more. Um, yeah. yeah. What am I trying to say here? Feeler gauges. I'm gonna actually have to cut a set up. I think or buy two extra sets. I've only got one to do this uh, oil pump. So um, what I'll do is when I get ready to put the pump on, which is actually coming up here basically next. And it really has, to, it doesn't have to go on before the windage tray. Um, the windage tray could go on, but um, I'll show you kind of the reason why it's, it's probably better to put the pump on and then put the windage tray and set your pickup tube, get it all on there, and then tighten everything down on that end of it. Uh, the pump will already, of course, be tightened. But I'll kind of show you the reason why I do it that way. Um, like I said, I've already had an oil pan deal, you know, where on that Malibu where I had to use that Holly oil pan. It allowed me to use the factory windage tray, but I had to cut it and modify it. I know I've told you this before. So uh, anyway, that's what's going to happen next. I'm going to clean this block up a little bit because i got oil everywhere, like it's pretty typical. And I'm going to go get some feeler gauges and we're going to do oil pump next and start putting the windage tray on. And then we're going to put the front and rear cover after we get the pickup tube, of course, on, then get the oil pan on. And the bottom end will basically be done. I'll probably turn it over and put, put the lifters in, and then I'll seal the motor back up until I can uh, get the heads done. Then we'll get the heads done, and that's basically it. It's time to, it's time to do, do the thing. There really isn't a lot to these. Don't be scared of jumping in and doing them. Um, where you run into your problems, like I've said in the past, I've, I've actually been very fortunate, and I usually do check. I didn't plastic gauge this because the machinist told me that everything mic'd out good. I trust him. 
don't always trust the guys you have do your machine work for because uh, yeah, they, you know, they, I'm not saying they'll screw you because that's not that's not the case. I, I've never had a machine shop really get me. I've had one that, that basically boldface lied to me about getting stuff done, but I've never actually had any problems with machine shops because they end up having the stuff come back on them, you know, if something fails, and, and they don't want that. So they don't want to leave you stranded out in the middle of the road somewhere. That's that's no fun for you, and it's no fun for them having to listen to it or have to do everything twice. So anyway, uh, but it's still a good idea to check all the stuff because there's times that um, that something was overlooked or missed, or you're doing it like me on a budget where uh, I did not check everything I probably should have. However, I'm reusing almost everything in here, so I've checked all the bearings to make sure they say standard on them. Uh, I've checked, um, you know, that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's not that I put new pistons in because if I was going to put new pistons in, I definitely would have checked clearance, uh, and I would have probably done that prior to ordering the new pistons, just because if it needed board, that was the time to do it. Don't order your pistons standard, then find out your bore uh, bore out. I was confident that this was not wore out just because of the mileage and what I saw on everything else. Usually by the time you get a lot of wear on your cylinders, your bearings will also show a lot of wear. And I was I showed no wear on any of the bearings. So uh, anyway, I'm just, you know, again, budget, thousand bucks. This is what I'm at. As a, as a, and you can do engines cheaper than that. I, I could have just done no machine work, ran the cam bearings the way they were, thrown a cheap, you know, just a couple of bearings and some gaskets in it, and we probably could have done this cheaper even yet. But um, those cam bearings kind of bothered me, and um, you know, you guys kind of saw all the pictures and what I was talking about uh, the, the video on them. I personally did not like it. Um, using the same cam, it may not have made any difference, but uh, I didn't like what I was seeing. So anyway, okay, we're going to go on from here, so I'll get back with you shortly. All right, <clears throat> well, here's the deal. Sorry about the shadows getting in the way. It's the way the light's set up. Obviously, it's a new old pump. I set it on here because I was trying to figure out. Now, it's a window straight just sitting here. I just set it on here because I was looking stuff over. So, nothing is bolted down. I haven't changed anything since uh, your last video. I just set this on here. I looked up several videos of people replacing these, and they're basically new to it, just like the just like the Chilton book says. Now you watch them car shows and they're getting taking these things apart doing all kinds of stuff with them and after watching several other videos nobody seemed to be really concerned about and, and now I kind of see why. You put those four bolts in it's not like anything is slotted or oversized or anything like this even without the bolts I could not move this pump up and down or side to side. Now that the bolts are in there is literally Especially once you snug it. Yeah, I mean, I can move it in and out because the bolts are just sitting there hanging there. But I mean, as far as side to side and stuff, there is not much movement there. So I'm really not going to worry about that. I'm just going to go ahead and put it on and kind of just look at it as I get it on and maybe spin the motor around a time or two just to see if I'm seeing anything or feeling anything. It's different than what it felt like prior to doing this. I am just not seeing anything that would require, plus I'm not building a thousand horse engine either. I don't know if that is what they're, maybe it's certain pumps that they're bought. Or maybe there's something more to this than I'm actually looking at. I don't know. I'm going to snug this up and see what it does. I, I don't know. And there is a torque uh, torque spec to this. So I'm just, you know, I know there's a torque spec to this. I re recommend you follow torque specs to the letter. See, now that it's snug and I don't even have it tight, nothing's moving. I mean, I just got very little movement out of it. Uh, I, I don't know. It does say prime it, and I'm kind of show you how I'm going to do it. So, uh, click, click, <laughs> click, click, as old elderly iron does. Um, like I said, guys, there's not much to this as far as I can tell. It's just in. Nothing was clocked or you had to go a certain way either. It just goes in there because it's it's flying kind of like that. If you remember, now this is what that keyway looked like. This is the old uh, bottom timing gear, and that's what your old pump runs on. Is that uh, that set of gears there? So I I don't know. It didn't look like that big of a deal to me. So okay, now we're gonna get into O-ring situations. The milling old pump said there's two different ones. It actually gives you a piece of paper. 
and it shows you if it, if your oil oil pickup tube looks like this, then you use the green one. If it looks something similar to this, then you use the black one. Uh, mine is tapered, and the one that came out of it was green, and it looked pretty used up too. I, of course, I'm assuming it's a factor one because it doesn't look like this motor had ever been apart. I'll bring it over and show it to you. It is flat. And this is the new one. So you can see the difference in them. And it's used up. Okay. I don't have any bolts in the windage tray. And I'm also going to show you something. I I've mentioned this before. There's only one bolt that holds this pickup tube onto the oil pump. However, there's two bolts on that. I think I said that before. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this O-ring on. And I'm going to oil it up. That you must do. Do not roll that oil. Don't roll that. Or not get that in where it belongs. If you if you mess this up, the motor's going to crap out. It's just it's going to do it. This thing has to, to fit in there proper or you will not have oil pressure. At least not very much, if any, because it's going to suck air past that, especially once it gets a little low. So the reason I didn't put any nuts on the windage tray is because I couldn't remember which ones to sink down. Now that I can actually see them now. So I'm going to start them. And as you can see, I've already lubed that up. This thing should just press on without any issues. There it went. Now, I'm gonna pick this up the best I can to look to see if I see any green that got cut off of it. I'm not seeing anything. You're out of light just to make sure. It popped on there kind of pretty good. I see no green anywhere. Life is good. All right. Um, so, and again, guys, I'm, I'm telling you, this is how I'm building this engine. You guys do it however you want. Don't, don't do it like I do and have a failure because something I said or did or you didn't happen. Couldn't quite see it because I know my camera angles isn't always the best. This is just me building an engine for something that I probably shouldn't have bought. <laughs> so, okay, they do make a kit that will either replace it or if you cut it off or if it's a whole different deal or if it's something that goes around. And I've seen guys do that. They'll actually take an old one of these, if they had an extra motor or two, and they'll cut this and then just kind of run the fork under this piece here that's tapped on and then just put another bolt in. You know, grind this out just a bit. And then that, or it's actually missing. And then the bolt will hold, you know, will fit there and then it'll hold down. Another guy took and he just notched this a little bit where that bolt would be, you know, go like it's supposed to. And he just put an extra washer. Got a little got a little bit longer bolt and stuck an, uh, a washer over top just to kind of grab this as it went down. I'm not going to do any either one because I'm not really seeing it necessary to do that. However, if I was doing something with, a, with more horsepower or I was concerned that this one bolt may or may not cut it, then I would definitely think about doing something different. And when I build my uh, bigger motors or one for my truck, something I'm going to have to rely on, everywhere I go, then I'm definitely going to, you know, get a little more probably carried away with it. So, this is just aluminum. I don't just do what I did. That's why I use quarter inch. I tightened it pretty tight though. It's flush. I mean, that's how it's supposed to be. So, all right, O-rings in. Oh, it's been lubricated. Windage tray, of course, is in place. Old pump is in place. Don't drop any of the nuts in the motor, which I will most likely do here in a minute. Because once it's in here, you can take everything back apart to get it out. Because I guarantee it's not going to fall out one of the holes you just dropped it in. Um, I've already put the seals in the front and rear cover. I, I don't think I really have to show you how to do that. The seals are seals. You know what I mean? Uh, I recommend a seal driver. I use either blocks of wood or brass, sometimes rubber, mallet. I don't ever use a screwdriver or anything like that to put it back together with. So, you know, don't do stuff like that. All right. <clears throat> oh, on this window straight, it, it actually says rear on it. You can't really mess this up. Well, I guess you possibly could, but 
I don't know if the bolts are staggered such a way that you can or can't, I, I really don't know. But uh, these nuts are lock nuts too, so they don't fall off and fall down in the motor. Now they'll get tight, you're not going to get them all the way down without your fingers. side of the time, that was me hitting the pickup too, it is still loose. Yeah, I got it on there, boy, it's close though. The only reason why I was able to do that is because I didn't tighten that other nut over there. get up into the rotating assembly but surface to make sure because I probably fingered it up a time or two when I got dust on it and it's not that it's you know I it ain't gonna leak I wouldn't think anyway but I'm always really kind of cautious on that okay now I wanna before I get carried away here I know I went through I know I did all these I know I tightened these down I know this is tight all right I need a gas. Okay, you can see, new gasket, new seal, yeah it's kind of dirty but I mean it's baked on, it's not going to hurt anything. So, gasket really can only go one way the way it's designed, I mean yeah you could probably try to put it on upside down or whatever. But Mind you, the seal isn't being affected yet, that's why I didn't oil it up because it won't be oiled until I put the balancer on. So, the back one has a, well, I'll show it to you when we get to it. It's a little harder to do because it's on the stand. But, 
So it's not impossible. I've done it before. Something that is important, I'm walking in front of the camera. I'm getting, when I get closer to it, I'll show you. Um, I've talked about the alignment of uh, oil pan to block and stuff, and, and uh, there is, that's something you do kind of have to watch for. And the reason why, what's different between this and the Gen 1s are, uh, you can actually, you can see I moved that, well, maybe you couldn't, but. It's best to put a uh, an actual uh, like a straight edge, something like that across there. Okay, it looks good. Um, you have to do it to the front and the back. You have to line this the both the end plates up with the with your uh, oil pan gasket side. And the reason why is because the oil pan is also aluminum, and the it actually has a bolt, two bolts in each one of the ends. If you have this too far up or too far down, it'll throw everything off. And the tighter you try to get it, especially if it happens to leak and you're up there trying to retighten it, you'll you'll end up breaking your because these bolts are little, and uh, you'll end up busting something. And it'll ruin a perfectly good day. So line them up to begin with. That is that is really important, and uh, you don't have to do it like I did. I, I I I've actually done this a couple of times, so I know kind of what to look for and how much to go. Your gasket will give some, and uh, I'm talking about the one that will be on your you know, oil pan, but um, not enough if you're way off. So that's just something to, to check and make sure that you're doing proper. So, anyway, you can get this on and then we'll try to fight that back one a little bit. And then I'll have to, I've got a little bit more clean in the oil pan. They actually have some, I don't know if it's a rivet, but something sticks through on the factory when it goes into the pan, and when you take the old gasket off, <clears throat> that's why I was having trouble getting that pan off originally, was because there was some, it actually was stuck on there, and uh, they stay in the pan, and I need to get those out. I may have to drill them, I don't know. I don't know how they come apart yet. I'm gonna have to look at it. But uh, the original gasket, I guess, had some type of a pin set up in it or whatever. Now these are, mind you, it's a cast block. If this is just a piece of aluminum, we don't need to kill it. So I am just on what I consider past snug. Especially the 3 8 ratchet. And that's it. Simple. Don't have to uh, don't have to kill it. assembly lube on the bearings and I use a little bit on that o-ring oil is the best thing to use on 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 o-rings mostly it was just really quick handy and I did it now this the seals always use oil don't use assembly lube on them use oil uh, preferably the same type of oil I would I would say it doesn't really matter I'm using synthetic on it and that's what like I said I know this this, this is what I consider crap brown water pins oil that I would never use in a car is what is lube and everything to begin with but uh, it is what it is I'm putting a little bit on the crank I've already wiped it down before I turned the camera on earlier just to make sure there's no sharp edges or anything and that there's no dirt or I'm just wiping that down on the end of that where that seal is going to run and I'll put them I, you really can't put much onto the seal I'll show you why here in just a second my hands half cleaned off here. I don't want everything covered with oil like I've already done. I'll 
time to get a new roll of snot rags out. All right, here's why. That white thing in the center is kind of a lineup deal. It was actually in the seal, and that happens with a lot of, of single piece rear main seals. When you slide that on, what that's supposed to do is uh, to keep that formed up when you slide that on that crank, it pushes this off at the same time it's sliding on. That way you're not going against a sharp edge or whatever. So um, make sure your gasket's right to begin with. Obviously I've got this backwards because you're not really going to be able to see this unless I've moved the camera around. Eh, I can do that, I suppose. It's just going to be a little bit harder to deal with and see. I don't know if I'm going to have this in the right place or not. Well, not if you're looking at my shirt. Definitely can't see anything that way. Well, I have too much garbage in the way, guys. I'm sorry. No, that's great, isn't it? You can kind of see that, can't you? i run you down just a bit. I can be able to see much more past that engine stand anyway. Anyway, that's the end of your crank. I've already oiled it up. This gasket's just gonna, it's actually going to be a pain. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm not even sure I have to have the gasket in there yet because it doesn't have any dowel rods or pins or anything like that. And as soon as I let go of it trying to push this seal on, it's gonna fall out on the floor anyway. So for now, I'm just gonna lay it aside. It's tight because of the engine stand. Once you get pretty close, down here you can see it actually line up on the crank and you let go. So that tells you it's lined up. And then don't get your finger in the way like I'm just about to do. And then just slowly push it on. It should go right over the crank like that. Most of all new uh, single piece of remain seals actually come with those already in them. So you don't have to. Uh, uh, you could keep it, I suppose. I kept one for a long time because I did that engine for the boys' car and it, and it didn't make it, I never did use it again. And then when I got another seal, it came with it. So, yeah. You didn't really need to save it. Hopefully I can get this in there. What do you think about that? I don't want to take it off the crank. Why do I have a feeling I should have put that on there? This is probably going to fight me just a bit. Uh, we can get it. I'm not going to let a gasket get the best of me. Well, that's not entirely true now, is it? Alright. Yeah, I see bolt holes through it. I'm going to start one here right quick. feel better now. I'm just going to go ahead and go around and start all these and we'll level it up. And There's a bunch of bolts at the top but the reason why is the oil actually circulates through there. kind of goes around in a circle. I really didn't show you the back of the block or the crank or uh, this plate. But uh, if you ever do one of these you'll see when you pull that plate off there it actually has some oil galleys behind it and uh, it's sealed up kind of separate. Not very easy to get to. Um, what I'm going to do, as soon as I get this tightened up, is I'm going to get some oil. I have some uh, Max, no, that's ATF. I'll have to look over and see what I got. I know I have some oil over there at work. I see some Mobile One poking out there at me. Um, anyway, I'm going to prime this oil pump a bit and it's not really priming priming but it is it's at least getting oil in it bet you I'm gonna have to get a wrench on some of these because there's no way a ratchet's gonna go in there do the same thing I did on the front just gonna get one on either side just kind of almost snug it really can't be moved very much because of the way the oil, you know, the oil seal is, but it's still a good idea to check it. 
I'm probably in your my head's in your way, I don't know. Okay, it actually could go up just a tad. Killing me here. No, no, my head's probably in the way. Sorry. Come on. I absolutely cannot get to without a wrench. So, oh, and we get my tan. Of course, every one of them laying here but the tan. along with an end wrench. Okay, I'm just checking them with a wrench since I'm here with it. Glad I did. Can't get to the ratchet. I thought there was two of them. All right, guys. The end plate. Now it's time. What they're telling me to do is to prime it, and um, I'm good with that. Uh, matter of fact, I think it's a good idea. So what I'm looking for is, uh, there it is. Which one is this? I have 530 extended mobile one. I got a full cord of that. What do I got a partial cord of? Here it is. This is, um, 
This is, uh, I'm not sure, it's not going to hurt anything, but it's called Dex Ose or Dex 05. I really don't know what it is. My dad's got a um, 12 Canyon crew cab, four wheel drive with a 5.3 in it. And he come down here and I think it actually used a little bit of oil. And I don't know if it uses that displacement on demand or not. I really don't know. Um, I'm sure he checked oil before he left. Dad's very adamant about doing that stuff. So I'm not really sure. But uh, he, it was like a quarter, half court low. And he still had a long trip to go. They were still headed east before they headed back west. So uh, he said, well, here, just keep this. I'm not going to need it. So he thought it was probably half court low to begin with, he thought. But it doesn't make a difference. All right, what they're telling me to do. is fail because I forgot to put the oil pump on. I didn't put the bolt back in the end of the crank. My goodness. I could actually put the balancer on if I really wanted to. That would be the last time I needed to put this on. Let me see what you're looking at. Because I don't know. You probably weren't looking anywhere close to what I was doing. Okay. Anyway, you're not really going to be able to see much. All I'm doing is... Uh, <laughs> uh, that ready. What they're telling me to do here, obviously the old pump's dry, the pickup tube's dry. So I'm going to... And I don't know where it's going to come out at, probably in my shoe from some open orifice somewhere. Okay. Obviously full, won't hold anymore. Not gonna hurt anything. And then they tell me to spin this thing around. And it's supposed to actually pull that down. And it is. Wow. They don't see it running out anywhere yet, but it went somewhere. <laughs> so that's a good sign, I guess. Okay guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. It's probably too long anyway. Um, now I'm going to get the oil pan cleaned up and because uh, there was a couple little things. I take it actually that there's a, there's a tray inside that they got apart uh, to do better cleaning and it still looks like it's needing a little bit more. So I'm going to clean a little bit more. Then I'll get, like I said, I have to make it to where that gasket will fit back on. I'm going to clean the block up here and I'll put the gasket on here and put the oil pan on. Next time you see it, I'll either have it on or I'll show you putting it on, but it's not that big of a deal. You see where the bolts are, you know, nothing's, not much changes on these. You know, I've got a big plastic trash bag I put over top of the engine when it sits, um, so there's nothing open. You, you want to do that, especially like where I'm at where the wind blows all the time and it's dusty. Uh, and you got the garage door open. Like yesterday, we had it open all day long working on that transmission and that lightning. So, uh, it, you know, I had um, literally had to drill... Uh, or uh, cut some wood, tube of sixes to build. Um, well, shoot, let me show you this. <laughs> you might get a kick out of it. That transmission is heavy. The new one he got, he told me, was $6,000. Uh, guaranteed a 1,500 horsepower. And that's my transmission jack. And that bottom, that oil pan is anything but flat at the bottom. And it came out of a four wheel drive. He actually put this one on this one for extra capacity. But uh, either way, uh, we managed to pick it up and set it on here. This is the torque converter out of it. And uh, he put it in, uh, looks like March 16th to 16th is when it was made. It's 2400 stall. He's going to sell that separate. Uh, the one he got was even, this purple was even smaller yet. But either way, uh, I might have shown you the picture of it sitting here, the black one. I ended up building another one of those boxes because we needed to leave the new transmission sitting upright Why we pulled this one out. So what I did was I took the slides off my transmission jack built this tube of six holder and then put a piece of OSB at the bottom and then drilled holes in it and then literally bolted that entire thing to the transmission jack because you cannot believe how heavy that transmission is. Um, he said, I don't remember what the numbers are. I'm not a Ford guy. I know it won't tell me nothing. No. It doesn't tell me anything. But either way, you guys have the Fords, if you're watching any of these, you know, probably not my LS stuff, but you might, you never know. Most Ford guys don't care for the LS stuff. Yeah, that's fine. I completely understand. I joke around saying, ah, this Mustang look good with a 5.3 in it. I will never do that. That is, that's, I would never do that. 
I do it to a Ford Ranger or something junky like that, but uh, the classics got to kind of have, you know, that's what they got to be. Anyway, I'm not going to keep her rattling on there, but anyway, that's a, I ended up having to cut a bunch of wood. And there's dust blowing around. I mean, I had this car clean, and you can see just in a short time yesterday, the garage door was open and the crap blew in everywhere, and it's now completely covered with, uh, with debris. I mean, you just cannot keep these things clean. Even in the garage, you can't do it. So. All right, guys, I'm going to get off here. Bored you enough, probably. Like I said, next time you see this, I'll either show you how to be putting the pan on or the pan will already be on. I need to do, like I said, there's some stuff to the heads I need to do. And then um, probably put the balancer on. Like I said, it's, it's easier to...